So, hello everybody here. Convert with Moss 5.0 is out and it adds to the conversions the core KMP-KSF formats which are available for quite some time by Korg. It was first introduced for the Korg Trinity back in 1995, so good old trusty workstation. But since then, always supported in all the different Korg workstations like the Triton series, the Oasis, the Korg M3, the Chrono series in all its different versions, also the Cross, but with that only for the pads, and also some entertainment keyboard from the PA series, as well as the latest release, the Korg Nautilus, released in 2010. 20 and all they support this rather simple format so it's basically only uh, one layer of distributed keyboard ranges so no velocity layers you need to set that up then in a machine itself when you did such a conversion and as you see here now in convert with moss you see we have now the kmp files as a source as well as a destination and since it contains no metadata at all you can do here a bit of guessing games or set some default values to retrieve them or guess them from the file name. So let's run a conversion in the other direction. For example, I have here some Bitwig Multi samples, some effect pads, and let's say we want to convert them to the KMP KSF format. As usual, you can test it first and then say, okay, let's do it and start it. The process is pretty slow because I need to extract the data from the files and then restore it and store it again. Could implement it maybe more efficiently, but this is a process you don't do every day and you can keep it running running in the background, so I wasn't eager to optimize it a lot. Maybe you have to wait a bit till this one finished. And what you also see already here, the file format of all those versions still use the good old 8.3 format of DOS. The names need to be reduced a bit, so it can happen if you have many similar names, long names, that you get some errors for file duplication when the process creates. In that case, you need to transform them individually. It could also that the conversion process shows up some errors which tell you to contact me and send me the file because for some things I could not find examples on the net. So if you see such a message, it would be great to get in touch and just send me the example file so I can look at it and maybe support this feature then as well. While this conversion is running, let's look at what is supported in that format. The WAV files which are supported as a source are a bit limited as well, so it supports only 8 or 16-bit WAV files. So normally you have 16-bit WAV files, so this might be not such a problem. It should be uncompressed data and the workstation support a wide variety of different sample frequencies, but only up to 48 kilohertz. So if you have some 96 or something, they will not be supported. But 44.1 and 48 are the most common ones and they are both working fine. As you see many red in here so there is no meter data at all and there is no group so it's, there's only one layer and you have the key ranges, no crossfades or anything and yeah at least you have one loop which can also be turned off and you can reverse play a sample and yeah that's basically it. so no envelopes, pitch or filter or anything in that simple format. We can already take a look at what What's going on here in the output folder? As you see, it will create such eight long folders for the files, and that one will contain such a KMP file, which contains this one layer for each of the samples. Is such a KSF file is created, which also contains here the sample data in itself. In the case that you have multiple layers, it will simply create multiple KMP files, which start with the upper bound of the velocity layer. So when the process have finished, I simply will copy it to a new speed stick. Here we are now at my trusty Korg M3 from back in the days, and it also supports this format, KMP format, as well as the KSF files. And I plugged in here the USB stick in the back, and let's check out. We go here in the media section, and there you already see the content of the stick. Let's go down here in the sample folder, open it, and you see here, here is the folder with the FXPad. I copied over, and these are the conversions of the 
all these pads and I have on there some samples I did myself on my even older O1W which I sold in the days but I kept all the samples and I still love them a lot. So this, uh, I think these evolving strings are quite a classic. Let's go to them. So you see here all the KSF files as well as the KMP file and you need to load that here we go and as you see this old thing is not the fastest one so it takes quite a bit to load this one sample in so you should definitely use a little bit smaller sample with that machine and as well maybe don't sample so much different key ranges let's go here to the program now and we have here an initial program <laughs> We just some piano standard in there and there you can go here in the page let's go to the oscillator and there you need to switch here to the ram which contains the sample and there you can say you want to choose here our evo string we just loaded in and that's it and let's listen here we go And sure, you need to tweak that a bit. For example, let's go here to the amplifier section. Let's increase the release time. Even more. And sure, you can add all the effects to that, filters and whatever you want, but this works fine. So you can take all your samples from your PC or Mac, what you have lying around, and put it here into such a workstation. And I hope you like it, dig it, and make some funky music.